Hello, this is Keith. Um, welcome back to my kitchen. I've been doing a lot of just lecture posts. Um, I am actually going to be preparing a very famous uh, recipe of mine. Uh, I don't even want to call it a recipe because I'm very big on uh, uh, not recipes, more on technique. This is a technique. And to me, um, that's where people... I go to meetups, I go to Raw Spirit Fest, and everybody's obsessed with this whole list of ingredients. Uh, it's all about technique. I mean, when you make a mousse, it's a technique. When you make a souffle, it's a technique. And so this is a technique. This is a thing that I make that people um, know me for. I bring these to raw food meetups or whatever. It's called, uh, I have now eat, uh, gone on to calling these onion pakotas, which is an Indian food. Um, people probably know them as uh, being called croquettes. Anyways, um, I have a lot of stuff prepared because I want to try and do this meal in, um, or this demo in ten and a half minutes so I don't have to make it a part one, part two. So, anyways, the major ingredients in the recipe is coarse chopped onions mixed with flax and sunflower seeds. Um, and then you combine the two and then you use this scoop to lay it out on the, um, on your uh, flax teflon sheets. So anyways, that, that's the recipe unto itself. Um, and basically, um, you know, when you, you do the dehydrator, um, a lot of people put a lot of nuts and, and seeds and stuff in there, and they wind up getting uh, crispy and crunchy. This stays soft because of a lot of the things that I'm putting in there. And what makes things stay soft is coarse chopped vegetables, um, coarse chopped zucchini, um, but we not entirely dehydrating it all the way and these I'm not going to entirely dehydrate I'm going to dehydrate them long enough so that the inside is still soft so anyways and uh, I want to point out one thing with the dehydrator um, one thing you need to be careful of is the dehydrator being at 110 or whatever your choice of dehydration temperature is is the perfect grounds for breeding bacteria so you need to be really aware of that you need to go to great lengths to clean your sheets off. What I do is I clean them off and then I wipe them off with a, a peroxide solution. So this is completely bacteria free. I've, I've cleaned up everything as best I can. So anyways, let's let's get on with the recipe. Um, so um, I don't know if I mentioned also this recipe is um, great for cleaning out the um, cleaning out the refrigerator with stuff that doesn't that maybe you don't want to put in your smoothies or your soups or whatever. Like this kale here, this looks to me like it's not, um, like it's it's okay, but it's not the best. So I'm going to go ahead and incorporate it. Um, I have a bowl of stems, uh, cilantro stems, uh, um, uh, uh, dandelion green stems and all that stuff. And that's going to go in in another phase. So. What you want to do, this recipe is great for just cleaning out the refrigerator. So, anyways, so I'm gonna get going with this. Um, let me see, what do I need to do? I wanna show you how to open up an, an onion. This is the best way to, to, to do an onion. Cut off both ends. I'm realizing that a lot of people don't know what they're doing with food, and so I'm gonna go ahead and do things, and, and I hope I'm not insulting and showing you how, how to take care of an onion. But, and then you cut it in half and then just peel your outsides off. And then like some of that, like there, once you peel it off, you can actually get that dry bit off. And this one is not gonna cooperate. So, but sometimes after you get that part off, you can get it off. So anyways, the most important thing about this recipe is using a lot of onions. I'm using six onions. So, um, you could use more. Um, when we put the sunflower seeds and the flax in together, um, it's going to bind it all together. So, this recipe is supposed to be mostly veggies, so. I'm gonna wind up using a whole stock of celery in this. Some of it I'm gonna use in the food processor, and some of it I'm gonna use in the Vitamix when I make my binder to hold it all together. So, um, we're gonna do that, and then I'm gonna take some of the kale here. 
Um, some of the kale I'm going to put in the blender, some I'm going to chop. And the whole idea of the, having the coarse chopped stuff is that uh, the coarse chopped vegetables keep that dehydrated food um, kind of soft and flexible and wind up turning it not, not into that whole crunchy thing that, that we're used to when you use the dehydrator like flax crackers or, or whatever. So go ahead. And And we just want a coarse chop on that, and that is exactly what we want. So we'll go ahead and incorporate this into the big bowl. Um, and whenever you're um, doing raw food concoctions, or even if you're cooking, you want to use every opportunity that you can to stir, because what you want to wind up not having happen is pockets of stuff. You want it all nice and evenly distributed. So I'm going to do another stir on this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my zucchini in there. And zucchini, in my opinion, the best way to um, do the zucchini is to grate it. Because if you put it into the, um, the squash, this is from my aunt's garden, by the way, macrobiotic produce. So I'm going to grate this up. Because if you do this in the food processor, it, it just turns to liquid. And sometimes you want that. In this case, I don't want it. So you want to grate the squash. I was seeing a, a, um, this 2020 thing that, that came on a long time ago that a lot of people uh, raw food is found very scandalous that came out right before that raw spirit fest where they were trying to say that raw foodists were orthorexic. And one big thing that they made a big deal out of was people saying that it takes forever to, per to, um, to make raw food. This is quick. The only thing that's long about this is getting this into the dehydrator. And once you get this going, you can go on about your way. So. Anyways, so that, that's good enough there. Um, now we're gonna go on to the um, vitamins.